we're going to let these students introduce themselves real quick because it's important for us to find out what grade you're in. So because y'all look like the Brady Bunch to us in different little squares, we're just going to call the first name. Introduce yourselves and tell us what grade you're in. All right, David, you're up. Hi, my name is David Hunt. I go to South Garden High School and I'm in 11th grade. All right, welcome, David. Uh, we're going to move right over to Leah Knight. I'm in 10th grade. 10th grade. Welcome, Leah. And, and which school are you from? South Garner. South Garner. All right. Next, we're going to have Justice Gibson. Hi, um, I, I'm Justice Gibson. I'm in 11th grade, and I'm from Garner. All right. Welcome, Justice. Olivia Traha. Hi, guys. I'm Olivia. I'm in 11th grade, and I go to Garner along with Justice. And Julian King. Uh, hi, my name is Julian, and I, I'm in eleventh grade. All right, and your school? Uh, South Garner High School. South Garner High School. All right, welcome to our panel. Appreciate having each and every one of you here. All right, guys. So I think you know our topic today is on Juneteenth. So just from a couple of nods of heads, thumbs up. How many of you guys are familiar with Juneteenth? Okay, yeah, kind of, sort of. All right, well, we know Juneteenth is known as Freedom Day. It's known as Jubilee Day, um, emancipation for slaves, African-Americans, right? So June 19th, 1865, we know that when um, Granger, when he, general, he's a general, when he rode into Galveston, Texas, and he announced that slavery had been abolished. This was huge for African-Americans, huge for the African-American um, community there. And it was actually the last state of the union that had gotten the message. So can you imagine, can you picture, can you hear the shouts? Can you hear the praises? Can you feel, sense, and understand what folks must have felt like in the middle of the Civil War, which was still going on out in Texas? And it continued for two years, even after the um, passing and ratification of the 13th Amendment. So just picture what that must have felt like. That's like your parents coming in your room saying, y'all don't have a curfew no more. Okay? So honestly, a good feeling for those slaves. I want to take a quick quote from what was called, and I'm taking glasses off to see far away, so y'all just bear with me. What was called, I want to say it was... General Order Number 3. So, General Order Number 3 was drafted by U.S. Army General Gordon Granger. So, he is charged with telling these folks, all the troops out in Galveston, that slavery had been abolished. Some of the wording sounded just like this. People who were once enslaved would obtain the same equality as their slave owners. So now, for folks that were slaves, that's good news, right? That meant land, property, equal rights, and treatment. But we know that words alone cannot change hundreds of years of treatment, customs, and traditions. So when you think about Juneteenth, these folks are just hearing that slavery is now illegal. Slavery is technically over. We want to hear from you just a little bit about your exposure to the history of Juneteenth. So with that, our first question is, tell us you know, what you know about Juneteenth. And this is not a trick question. This isn't a pop quiz. I mean, if it's, if, if it's little to nothing, let us know if there's some, some uh, if you've learned about it in some way or another in a class, reading from parents or whatever, kind of let us know how you came to know about Juneteenth. So uh, who would like to step up first and, and, and let us know what you know about Juneteenth. Yes, unmute and we will pick you. Um, I basically know everything that she said. That's about as much as I've um, learned myself. But the perspective that was put on it really um, kind of made me think about it in a different way. Like, especially like for two years, they thought, you know, still having to put up with being with slavery and like, they just, they came and the general came and it's like, so it's been over two years and nobody came and told us. 
but like it's still it's still the the sense of gratitude like oh my god it's finally over and then it went from like the celebration in texas to eventually uh all around the world yes very good very good so um the when we think about the emancipation that was declared january of 1865 so the beginning of the year right so here's this information congress has passed this law and from that january until december before it was ratified they're still fighting texas is still not aware even once they get the news they continue to fight can you imagine the conflict that folks that were once slaves now have to deal with i'm celebrating me and my family, my folks, we're getting together. It is our 4th of July in our minds, right? But then there's still this tug with white former slave owners. Real life, not just something we've read in books or heard from teachers. Husband, question number two or three. It's up to you. Oh, we don't want to hear anybody. Oh, I'm anybody sorry, somebody else. I apologize, y'all. I just jumped. <laughs> David, we took your answer and I was good. Thank you. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask if anybody else has any response to tell us what you know about Juneteenth. And your answer cannot be what David said. It can't be that one. <laughs> so who else would like to unmute and say anything about what they may have uh, learned about Juneteenth? All right, go right ahead, Olivia. So I think it's um, interesting, you know, to look at we have the um, the general historical definition of what Juneteenth actually is, and then we've seen how it the meaning of behind Juneteenth has really um, changed and evolved as you know we've progressed through the years. Um, in more modern in a more modern setting, I feel like Juneteenth has become an even bigger celebration of the variety of cultures that are behind what those slaves went through and the the generations that have continued to grow through that. Um, and, you know, here we are now. And I just think it's it's beautiful to look at that growth um, of something, of a celebration of something so exciting. Thank you for that, Olivia. I appreciate that. We're going to dig into that a little bit later, too, a little bit more later on. So thank you for opening up that part of our discussion. Thank you for that. Anybody else have any comment for question number one? Tell us, tell us what you know. Okay. Well, with that, we'll move to question number two, which is uh, for whatever it is that you do know about Juneteenth, how did you learn about it? Tell us how you came to learn about Juneteenth. Uh, just unmute. Go ahead, Justice. Okay. So um, I learned about Juneteenth. I'm gonna. Okay, so I, I, I knew about it. Like you know, I, I heard about my old year about Juneteenth. Um, it was never really talked about, but I, I kind of learned through like the media. So like, I, you know, it, it would be like certain things. I'd be like, okay, so then I would just piece it together. So that's kind of how I came to find out about it. And then I went into my own like, okay, well, I need to look this up. I need to get into it for myself. So I basically did my research, and now I know. Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, cool. You'd be surprised that there are quite a lot of people, and, and I mean black people as well, people of color, who learned about Juneteenth the same way you did, Justice. All of a sudden, people started talking about it, and we're raising our eyebrows like, what is this? And Because we didn't know. And, and it's not surprising that a lot of us did not know, because again, it's not something that was readily shared. It's not something that's readily taught. Mm -hmm. So when the news media started talking about it, a lot of us were just like you. We started Googling. We started looking up Juneteenth and trying to find out the facts about what it was. So, so yeah, thank you for that, Justice. Uh, anybody else? How did you learn about Juneteenth? Uh, I learned about it from my parents. Um, I didn't really learn about it in school, but uh, my parents told me a little bit about it, but I still didn't know like the um, full story about it. So I'm just now um, learning the full background and story of Juneteenth. That, that excites me. Your answer excites me that your parents share that information, pass that information down to you. Because again, that's one probably one of the second most common ways that we're actually learning about something that was as critical, as monumental, as important as Juneteenth. You know, parents sharing it with their children, generations passing it down to the next generation. So thank you for that, Julian. Anyone else? How did you learn about it? Or, or, you know, if you're just learning about it from this <laughs> from this panel, say that too. <laughs> David, Lee, uh, Lee, anything oh, to add? Is unmuted. 
Oh, go ahead, Olivia. Um, I was going to add on very similar, like basically spot on with what Justice said. I also learned about it through the media, um, especially last year when we saw um, a lot of social injustices that were happening. That was something that was very um, highly talked about during this time. And that was really basically this, that and this discussion that have like, you know, really brought me full circle and helped provide me with a good foundational understanding of what Juneteenth really is and what it's about. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Olivia. David, Leah, anything else to add? Um, yeah, I would say I learned about it the same way that um, Olivia and Justice did. Um, but especially um, like just now with the, um, I learned more like when you said um, that uh, the general wrote in, they kind of had to address everybody that, you know, uh, uh, slavery was over. And um, yeah, I, a lot of media and there's like, again, hearing about it, it's like, well, what is Juneteenth? And you know, like you said, just like going onto the internet, looking it up and finding my own answers. Fantastic. Thank you guys for being honest with us. So let me tell you, former classroom teacher, um, elementary school, South Carolina, New Jersey, and here, it wasn't until I think the birth of me really diving into social media that I started to hear about Juneteenth. And I taught every subject in elementary school. And it was not in the curriculum that I had. I'm just going to be honest with you. And so I started to do a little research. And when my children um, were older, a little older, we started talking about it. But my son, can, he said he remembers the most in-depth conversation when he was in the car with me. He was leaving middle school. He was in the sixth grade. So my daughter was just going to go to high school. And we're engaged in this conversation. And I'm talking to them about our history. And I felt so guilty because I hadn't shared that with them. And so from that point on, it is something that my children, they are more informed about, but they didn't hear it in school. And even in a black household, I am guilty. We are guilty. It wasn't a conversation right. that we were having with them. So thank you guys for being honest and being transparent. Cool, cool. All right, moving on to question number three. And this, I'm, I'm really interested to, to hear your perspectives on this. So we're having this panel. Uh, Garner's trying to move in a direction where you know they're going to be celebrating Juneteenth and 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 trying to understand how people are feeling about it in the community. My question to you is, what do you think Juneteenth's significance is to the present? What's the impact of Juneteenth today? What's why is it so much in the media now? Do you think why is it? risen in terms of significance and importance now. So think about that. I want to share a little more history, okay? Remember classroom teacher, so I got to front load some information before you give the answer. <laughs> well, the truth is, as of 2020, there are only, there was only 47 states that recognized Juneteenth as a state holiday. North Carolina, yes, we recognize it as a state holiday, but it's not a paid day off, and it is not a national holiday, right? So it is not a holiday that has been declared. You can take off from work, you get paid for it, you celebrate it this way. This is the day when we do X, Y, and Z. Not formalized. So, so many states started grassroots um, endeavors, just like this one, conversations. So they started community cookouts and they started church events and they started educating school groups and they started educating church groups. So think about this. The 4th of July, known as Independence Day. I know you guys could tell the story. I know you understand the history and the significance. How is it that we have all this information? And here I am, a little black girl from South Carolina, shooting off fireworks, celebrating the 4th of July, when technically that was not my ancestors' Independence Day. It was not their Freedom Day. So then I had to do more research. So think about that question again. What is the significance of Juneteenth today? Why is it significant today? And before you answer that, I got a, I got a pop quiz question. Mm. And I want to see if anybody knows the answer to this question. There is no prize other than the fact that you just get to be the one that knows it. <laughs> there will be no Chick-fil-A gift cards or anything like that. Um, the question is, there is one state in the nation that has Juneteenth as a paid holiday. What mm. state is that? Whoever thinks they might know the answer to that question, 
just we'll give you guys about 15 seconds to answer before I blurt the answer out. You can just get out. You can just throw I, will, out I will tell you during the course of our intros and stuff, we've already given you the answer. So what do you think it could be? And Ooh, David has raised his oh, hand. David. Olivia was moving to unmute, but David raised his hand first. David, the answer is. Is it Texas? It is Texas, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Texas is the only state in the nation that has made this a paid holiday, which, you know, in a sense makes sense, of course, because Juneteenth was uh, Texas being notified that slavery has been abolished. So I just want to <laughs> throw that out there. But uh, that is literally the only state as of today that recognizes Juneteenth and, and provides a paid holiday for, for the celebration. Yeah. All right. So with that, why is it significant today? Why does Juneteenth matter today? Well, I was going to hold off. But, um, so I think that it's very important today. And like, it's more known now because people are starting to have conversations. Like they're starting to be informed, um, especially with what we see in the media. Um, you know, it feels like we're still bound in a way. So they're like, we're, like, we, like we've been free. Like we've, we've been free for years. So I think um, since people are starting to see that more in the media and start, and start and starting to have conversations, I think that's why it's become more more important. I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. Thank you, Justice, for that perspective. Yeah. Who else? Who else? Why is it significant today? Why do you feel it matters? I think um, a reason it matters is that so people can actually learn about it for like those, the numerous people who don't know. So like, people learn like about Juneteenth, even if it is on Juneteenth, they'll be able to learn like, you know, what it is, why it's gonna be and why it's so big now and why it's only, it only has potential to get bigger as com as like more and more conflicts arise or like as more and more um, like tensions arise too. Like it just has more and more of a reason for us to be able to celebrate what we have now and what we have, what we can have in the future. You know what I mean? Absolutely right, man. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Thank you, David. Leah, Julian, what do you guys think? Why is it why is it important to learn about Juneteenth? Why is it important now to to celebrate Juneteenth? Why 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 is it impactful today? Uh, I think more so people are actually trying to make an effort to learn about it now and actually try to learn about why it was important specifically to um, African Americans more so and try to understand why they feel that it's an important holiday that everybody should recognize. I think everybody is actually trying to learn about it instead of just um, kind of brushing it off and not really paying as much attention as they should. I like that response as well, you know, trying to trying to understand the significance of, of why it's significant to, to people of color. And that is important, especially in, in today's times, in today's climate. I'm going to make a comparison to the 4th of July in just a little bit, but we want to hear from some more folks and then we'll check and see if any of our viewers have anything to share. All right, go ahead, Leah. Uh, uh, doing, doing just going, going, the point. going off of what Julian said, yeah, like more of African American, but not if like you're not only African American. Like everybody's getting to know because it's become more popular. Like they said before, mm -hmm. it's making a trend, not a trend, but it's becoming more of a topic on social media po um, yeah. platforms. And right. more people are starting to hear about it because of how long it happened. And basically in school, like it is being taught in school, but not like as a, a big topic, but it is being spoke on. So like more people are starting to hear about it. And when they hear about it, they want to know more about it because they don't know about it. So. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And, it, and it's great to hear that it is, it is now at least on the curriculum it is at least being discussed in the classroom and then that gives opportunity for bright people like you to, to ask more questions and dig deeper into it um but but that that's great thank you uh for those responses did we get everybody olivia did, did you answer as well did we get everybody i think so olivia do you have more babe um no ma'am i do not i kind of commented on that a little bit earlier about like kind of you know the more modern setting that I feel like Juneteenth has been able to um, adapt to. Um, and I'm very happy that, you know, like, like Leah said, it, we are starting to talk about it in its prevalence now in school, um, which is great because 
um, you know, in history, really, you kind of, you might just read like a couple speeches from like Martin Luther King or, um, you know, Maya Angelou. And that's basically it. You know, you don't really there. Where's the where's the history that's actually the history behind this very important day? Um, so I think that's important to consider as well. Agreed. Agreed. So a little more history. Remember, I'm, I'm your teacher just for a minute, so I'm borrowing you guys. So think about this. Fourth of July, 13 colonies. We are now free from written rule. We are now our own states. We are independent. We are free. We are liberated. 1776. That spoke to a group of people. It didn't speak to African Americans. It didn't speak to slaves, right? Folks of African descent. That's 1776. When we celebrate the 4th of July. It's huge. It means a lot to us. We are now free and, you know, we're not under Britain's roof. We're excited. From 1776 to 1865, there was still a population of people who are not free. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great answers on that question. I appreciate everybody jumping in and giving their responses. Uh, each of you, uh, wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. answer to that. Um, we do have, uh, let's see, I see Rick has joined on, on the live as well. He's like, thank you for this program. Um, Rick, how do you pronounce Rick's last name? Mercer. Yep. Rick Mercer. Town of Garner. He represents the town of Garner and helped us put this panel together, help bring us to this forum. Uh, John Moran, he's also a former educator. He's yes. on as hey, well. Brother. And I just want to read this comment from John Moran, you know, being a former teacher. John said, in response to the question of where you learned about it, as a former educator, it is disheartening that our true history isn't talked, about, isn't talked and discussed within the walls of our classroom. This is a factor of the systemic bias and racism that still exists. Being uncomfortable in our discomfort is needed. Ooh. Thank you, young people for telling the truth. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's from a former educator, John Moran. Mm. And uh, Rodney Dickerson has joined as well, and he's just saying great dialogue, everyone. So so people are already responding to, to the responses you guys are giving and to the conversation that we're having. So that is wonderful. When you think of the 4th of July, do you feel like just, just this is me? I was proud. We were united. We had our red, white, and blue on. Again, we're shooting the fireworks. You got that day off. It was probably a long weekend for most of us. Most of you know, the 4th of July, as y'all know, some serious cookouts and picnics and firework shows, right? Town of Garner, right? I am so proud of our community that we can say, but that's not everybody's story or everyone's history. I love the fact that we want to take this nation for what it was and what it is, look at it truthfully and openly. How many of you guys have some bad habits? How many of you have some things that if you want to, you might want to change about yourself, <laughs> right? We do. So <laughs> as a nation, it is time for us to stop hiding stuff, little pieces and parts of our history that make us who we are and that makes us whole. Let's talk about them. Let's address them. Let's be truthful. And then we can fix those things. We can improve those things. We can even embrace some of the mistakes that we've made. So just thank you so much for your candor today. Husband. Fantastic. Um, we'll proceed forward and uh, we, we have a couple more comments that we'll get to a hey, little bit AJ later. Hey, AJ is watching. John is here. Again, just a couple of more folks joining us. We yeah. always like to say hello to folks that hang out with us a little while. All, All right. right. All right. So my next question I have for you guys is this. How do you think Juneteenth, Juneteenth relates to other things you have learned about American history? And, and that, mm -hmm. this, that take a minute to take this question in. How do you think Juneteenth relates to other things you have learned about American history? And you know, just to further delve into it does, it, does it change how you view American history in general? Does it enhance American history? How do you think it impacts what you've learned uh, in American history? learning about Juneteenth, because I already heard you guys, some of you did, didn't know about it till your parents told you about it, some of you didn't know about it till you heard about it in the media, but as you learn about Juneteenth and how significant a day it was, how does that impact your view of American history in general? I hate being the first to answer, but... And it's um, hard. It's so, right. I, so, I think that it's changed my view because I was thinking, I was like, so 
if they were free on this day, I, I kind of wanted to inquire, like, no, like, basically, like, how do they make us feel? Like, that gap time, like, it's like we were, like, half free, like, like one foot in the door. <laughs> one foot, like, it was like a half thing, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it just changed my perspective. Like, it kind of made me think, like, did they even care, you know? Yeah. That it was, like, not for everyone, but for them, so. Yeah. Wow. The half part, that's kind of deep, and you gave me chills. Um, a lot of us may, in, in our families, a lot of us may be in blended families, or our mom may be remarried to someone who's not my father, and they have a child together, and technically they're half brother and sisters or whatever. There's, there's always this feeling to me when it comes to that half this, right? Um, in our family, no matter how you're related, you're whole everything. That's your whole entire cousin. But that person is really married to your aunt that's married to your uncle that's really not even blood related to you, but they're still your whole cousin. I appreciate that, Justice. You're absolutely right. The connotation of have something. This really isn't about you, but you got to support it anyway, or you don't really know that this isn't about you. So you're just going along to get along. Mm-hmm. And and the, the point you made that's interesting to me that I really hadn't put that much thought into, but now you got my brain spinning on it, though, is how did they feel, man? Because mm. here it is on June 19th, 1865. That's 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 Emancipation Day, right? Um, but no, I'm sorry. January 31st is when the 13th Amendment gets passed. Mm-hmm. But Texas doesn't learn about it until, what, six months later? Mm-hmm. And so not only are they told that they're free, but they had to have been informed that it was passed six months ago. It's just now getting to you. So I, and now Justin, I, I wonder how, mm-hmm. how that feels to them. Mm-hmm. And it also makes me think about some things that correlate to what's going on in, 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 in the world today, which we, we may touch on a little bit later, but I'm gonna talk less and listen more. So um, who else? Uh, how does it impact what you've learned about American history? Learning about Juneteenth now, knowing what you know, How's it impacted how you view American history and what you've learned? Uh, I know for me, I, um, when I first learned, I just thought it was, they just, honestly, I thought they just were freed and then they just went in regular civilization. But when I learned more about it, I realized that wasn't the case and that even though they were free, they still had a tough life in terms of getting jobs and living as I would say other Americans were living, it was still tough. So. Now knowing what I know, I honestly know that it's not the case. They just walked off wherever they were from, and then they just went to civilization. Uh, it wasn't a beautiful ending after that. You're absolutely right. Very sir. good. <laughs> You're absolutely Very good. Right. Very good connection. I appreciate that. All right. Who else? Who else? Uh, go ahead, Olivia. Um, coming from the perspective of a young white American, who has been able to grow up with the privilege of not really having to recognize a lot of things um, and other other allies as well that are here, you know, listening in with us for this discussion. This should make us reflect um, as privileged people, you know, how can we move forward and continue to grow um, as as America as a whole, when like Justice said, we have um, our African Americans and our minorities who have one foot in and one foot out. Mm -hmm. So they're still not fully in. What can we do to make sure that they're fully in, in a sense? So that's just, you know, some food for thought there. Absolutely. And and Justin, uh, Justice, you started something with this one foot in, one foot out thing. Yeah, Yeah. I appreciate that. All right, go ahead, David. I saw you reaching for your mute button, man. (laughs) Um, So when I thought, when I like realized um, like about, you know, the whole, importance of Juneteenth, it made me think that like, uh, like what um, I think Julian said, uh, life was not like a cakewalk after that. Like after Juneteenth, it feels like, you know, there was always another thing to bring uh, people down. So like they had uh, long, like years later at Jim Crow and stuff like that. And that was another thing that would, it's like, it's like we're free, but we're still bound by the ideas that are past, like it's, that it's still left, that we've left behind. Like, we are free now ourselves, we are free now, but like, how free are we really? Mm. Like, how how much can we do on our own without oppression? And it took so long for 
people to realize, you know, that's just not how it should be. Mm-hmm. You're right, man. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. So can I say something? I appreciate you bringing that up. So when we started out, I asked you guys to just hear the sounds, the cries of, oh my gosh, no longer chained, no longer whipped, no longer beaten. The excitement of, I am now considered to be equal to this man or woman that used to own me and mistreat me. Well, guess what? Change was, again, I said it, it was a word, right? It was not the action that a lot of slaves, former slaves, experienced. So yeah, we may have had the Juneteenth celebration, but guess what was happening still on a lot of former plantations? You're still being beaten. You're still being whipped. You're still called being called robbers, and you still don't have property to live on and houses to live in. So for years, there was still a fight between that and then the America that we know just up until uh, another unfortunate um, shooting of an unarmed black man or a young black girl. So, so much has happened. We want to just challenge and encourage you guys. Be about more than just words. Change is more than just words. And David, I think that you just lifted that up. Absolutely, absolutely. Any more comments to share? Any more comments? Leah, anything to add? Or did your did your compatriots cover all the ground and steal your, steal your thoughts? <laughs> You good? Okay. Um, And I will just take a minute to say, here's here's what happened with me. The more I learned about Juneteenth, the more the more it got me thinking about July the fourth. And I love America. I love our country. Uh, I think I still think America is the best country in the world. But the more I learned about Juneteenth, the more I I I, I started investigating. I started googling, and I ran across the, the the speech that Frederick Douglass gave 13 years before the 13th Amendment because somebody, for some reason, thought it was a great idea to invite him to speak about July the 4th, because he was educated, he was in, in, you know, in running in congressional circles and all these kind of things. And one of the first things he said in that speech was, what is the 4th of July to the slave, right? For us, it didn't mean the same thing as it meant for the rest of America. But then when I learned about Juneteenth, you know, which, which saddens me because it's true, you know, for us, we weren't free. But now you learn about Juneteenth and you understand that now here's something as a, as a person of color, I can celebrate this freedom moment, not just the 13th Amendment in January, but also this freedom moment for Texas as well. And, and there's something that I can, I can shoot off some fireworks for and kind of understand the, the excitement around it. So it just kind of deepened that for me. So just wanted to throw that out there. All right. Um, One quick comment from Robin Hall Jordan. Robin Mm -hmm. Hall Jordan said, recognizing Juneteenth reminds all of us that slavery's end is important to celebrate, yet this freedom of enslaved people is not the end. She says, social justice is a constant and ongoing struggle. So keep reminding us each year and come together. Just, just, you know, forums like this. Yeah. Perfect example of that. Yeah. And a shout out to the town of Garner for being courageous enough to have these conversations. We truly have a Juneteenth committee. Um, Again, Juneteenth is not a federal holiday, right? It's not a national holiday. Um, But the town of Garner said, we want to celebrate. But what we realize is we need to educate folks. We need to pull more people in. We need to hear, know, and understand what it is people think about Juneteenth. How can we make this matter? That's what's important. And again, beyond our words. So cool. we'll move on. Cool. All right. Next question up for you guys is, um, so we talked about how it impacts American history. We talked about why is Juneteenth significant now in the present time. Let's let's shrink it down a little bit and ask this question. Why do you think Juneteenth is relevant to Garner, to the Garner community? Why should it matter to the city of Garner? Your thoughts on that? Um, I think, go ahead, I'm Justice. Sorry, I think, You're good. So I think it's matters to the town of Garner because um, we, like, you know, you have to start somewhere. I think that by starting in your local area, you can be able to, I guess, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it, you can kind of, like, expand. So, yeah. like, by starting here, then you can go from, 
Garner to the Triangle area, then from the Triangle area to Wake County. Yeah. And, you know, just, just build that from there. Great, great. great. I hope the mayor's watching. <laughs> I'll meet Rodney and Dickerson. Well, Rodney is here. Right. Our students. <laughs> Y'all talking that real talk. All right. Absolutely. Okay, Olivia, go right ahead. Um, I, I certainly agree with Justice. I feel like, you know, there's some inspirational quote somewhere where it basically just talks about, you know, if you really start on a small scale, it can be so much more than what you really think the end product could be. Um, you know, we could end up seeing this on a national level and really there's not much we can do, um, you know, across the United States right now, except for, you know, signing petitions and things things like that but by actively getting involved in our own communities that's where we can really root that um i guess inspiration would be a good word to continue to recognize um and continue to do um so the great the good start for that was town of garner having a juneteenth committee that's an awesome way to get started and then along with this panel to really get the ball moving on this topic absolutely absolutely um, great Great. Who else? Who else? Why do you think it's relevant to us here in the Garner community? Oh, I think it's relevant because, as you said earlier, a lot of people in Garner can really relate to the 4th of July. So mm -hmm. I feel if more people related to Juneteenth, why not make the effort to get um, committees and um, talks and mm -hmm. have a conversation to learn more about it as a community. So that way we can spread the word to other communities who might feel the same way, but not have the same resources or feel that they're ready to have that conversation. Why not let Garner be a catalyst for other communities? Wow. Spark it. Great. Great answer. Great Ooh, answer. I'm, I'm, I'm bring all y'all <laughs> home to me. Goodness. Great answer. Anybody else? David, Leah, anything else to add about uh, why it's important to Garner? Not pressuring you, just seeing if you have any, any, any additional thoughts on that. Uh, your compatriots covered some pretty good ground there. I think the common theme we're seeing here is, hey, a lot of great things start small. And also, when you, and when, you know, we've had the opportunity, the, the luxury, the experience, the privilege to talk with the mayor and talk with town officials and talk with the, the uh, uh, police uh, force and everything. There's a lot of things that Garner does well. And one of the questions, and we heard all this great stuff about what Garner is doing. And one of the immediate things we said to them is, why don't you expand that out and show other communities what you're doing? Because if you're doing this well and you're doing this the right way and, and you, 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 you make that known, it'll spark something in other communities. So these, that's the very same thing you guys are suggesting right now. Why not start here in Garner? And, and, and Garner's doing great things around Juneteenth. Publicize that and we can be a catalyst for other communities to spark uh, change around that. So great, great, great response on that. And it was really cool for me learning that other communities are um, becoming active around Juneteenth. But I really appreciate what you said, Justice, with starting small. And then there's also this part for me. It shouldn't be somebody else. Why not me? My son said, how's the committee going? So I'm saying that to y'all. I don't want to point fingers at somebody else and say y'all need to do it or what they need to do. I am so thankful that you guys took the opportunity and the time to show up today some folks had work schedules changed and everything to be a part of this panel, because guess what? You are a part of that change. And I encourage you, not us older folks, you know, I didn't say old, I said older, <laughs> not us older More folks, seasoned. but you guys will be <laughs> boots on the ground to definitely affect the change that we need to see. So thank you for that. And then the last part that I want to share is the one foot in and one foot out. I don't want my children in a town where they don't feel like they matter just as much as anyone else who may have a lighter complexion, blonde hair, or blue eyes. And I'm not saying that that's how we feel in Garner, but if we really mean we're united, we're liberated, we're one, we're equal, all of our voices matter and our talents, I want my children to feel as if this town is for them too. Absolutely, absolutely. So great answers, guys. Great answers. Before I get to the next question, 
Rodney Dickerson has a comment here. And, and again, we welcome Rodney. As he is our city manager. manager. I don't yep. know if you guys have ever met Mr. Dickerson. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy doing a great job as city manager. Rodney Dickerson says Garner, Garner prides itself on being a diverse community where, where neighbors care about each other and get along. So what a great way to show it by celebrating and acknowledging Juneteenth as an important day for all of us, not just African-Americans, for all of us, not just African-Americans. And that, that's awesome. Any I wonder, so I'm, 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 I'm just being a teacher a little bit. I'm wondering where Rodney is going when he says not all of us. Does he mean then that my white neighbors get to celebrate me? Because guess what? They know that my Emancipation Day, my uh, Jubilee Day, my Freedom Day was considered technically June 19th, 1865. The same way I'm shooting off fireworks on July 4th, I'm hoping that that's the message that we're sharing, not just for black people, not just for white people, but that we're all, all yes, for yeah, all of us, we're feeling appreciated and important. Yep. Thank you, yep. Mr. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate it. All right, next question for you guys. So we've got this panel, we're having a discussion, that's great. We, the, the Juneteenth committee was created in Garner. That's great. What other stuff do you think we could do to raise awareness about Juneteenth in Garner? What other ideas do you guys have? What are the things you think we could do to, to really kind of educate, you know, Garner and, and, and celebrate this momentous occasion? Uh, well, I don't know if it's happening now, but I think if we start teaching students when they're i'm not gonna say too young not too young to understand but young enough to where they can understand and continue to teach it on um, forward then that will create more knowledge so they won't be as clue not clueless but not be as curious asking questions and they would know more about it so that would help tremendously and, and i i would use the word clueless because because you know at a very young age i was clueless about a lot of our of, of African American history, a lot of it. So yeah, you're right. We could start younger, you know, because we teach we teach the Fourth of July pretty early. <laughs> so if we can start teaching Juneteenth and that type of history early as well, that would definitely have an impact. So Julian, totally agree with that. I'm thinking Native American history, Asian American history. I mean, we know the state of our nation, y'all. It's like we decide one minute we don't like this group of people, and then the next minute we flip and we don't like that group of people. It is so important for us to realize that when you cut um, Olivia or you cut Leah, we still bleed red blood. We are truly one people. We really are. So I'm just appreciative of the fact that we can have this conversation around Juneteenth. But as a town, as a state, as a nation, as a world, we got to start caring more about folks that don't look like what we see when we look in the mirror. I'm just going to be honest with you. Absolutely right. Absolutely. So thank you, thank you, Julian, for your response. Again, you know, what else can we do? There's no bad answer. Here's your here's your golden opportunity to kind of give some recommendations that we can potentially act upon to uh, to uh, continue along this good path. Uh, Olivia, I see you reaching for your mute button. Go ahead. Um, one thing that I feel like instantly came to my mind. Um, is that here in Garner, we have a lot of schools, more specifically magnet schools. Um, and I know for Justice and I personally at Garner Magnet, um, I think this year and um, next year, there has been um, an elective specifically focused on African-American literature, which might not be specifically about Juneteenth, but it's still, it can open up that discussion um, for example, something that they might read in that class would be Frederick Douglass's speech. Um, and that could open up that discussion, which is great for our magnet schools. Um, but as far as uh, younger levels go, um, like for example, Aversboro Elementary, um, we could I could definitely see us working with um, Southeastern Regional Library. Um, I know they do a lot of um, activities and read-alongs and things like that. So we could adapt it to be more tailored so um, our younger ones can start to be educated at a younger age. Awesome, awesome. Do you know what I hear? Cultural relevance, acceptance, and empowerment. When I say cultural, I don't just mean African-Americans. You guys are onto something. And Olivia, I remember taking my kids to the little readings in the library. I worked at Avisboro Elementary School. I understand the power of community and connection. Remember guys, knowledge really is power. So thank you, Olivia. Awesome, awesome. 
Anybody else? Recommendations, suggestions. What else can we do to raise awareness here in Garner? See, the manager's listening. Tell them what y'all want. <laughs> Rod is taking notes. He's taking notes. <laughs> you guys think of anything else? I mean, I don't know if this happened already or not, but um, I was going to say, like, more events, like, more... Um, I guess you could say, like, you know, like, Juneteenth events, you know, st I mean, stuff just to get the word out, because I feel like a lot of people, I mean, and even, like, just in the world, like, would celebrate it more and acknowledge it if they knew. Like, I mean, because we can't expect everybody to know. I mean, th and that's why we have to celebrate others. So that way it's not like we're just, like, you know, like, we're not just celebrating our own community or what we have. We're celebrating others. So that way it's not only making ourselves aware, but others as well. That's oh, man, that is awesome. Idea. That is awesome. Yep. And and again, not just African-American culture, but Rodney said it. Garland really is a diverse community, guys. So it's so much more for us to learn about other nationalities, other races. I'm excited. Anything yeah. else? Yeah. No, those, those are great. Great ideas. Great ideas, guys. Thank you for sharing those with us. Now, it is around 6.55. It is about time for us to wrap up our time together. But I just want you to take a moment and reflect on how you and your family in the past, how you celebrated the 4th of July or how you celebrated Thanksgiving. Don't get me um, started on Columbus Discover in America. Don't even, don't let me go there now. Don't do that. <laughs> That's a whole other panel. Or whole Native other Americans day. being <laughs> savages and they had to run. Yeah, no, don't, don't get me started. Don't, don't get me started. Okay, but I want you to think about some of your traditions. If there's anything that you could do for this cause, making people aware of the importance of Juneteenth, what is something you could personally commit to? And you don't have to share it with us on camera, but I really want you to think about that because change truly does start with these beautiful, brilliant, amazing faces Absolutely. that we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about that. All right, we'll check and see if we have any more comments. I think we're about done. Anything else? Yeah, uh, last comment here I have is from John. And John says that, as Melanie stated, you guys are on to something with the ideas you presented. Um, and he says, you are the reason for hope. And this makes his heart sing. <laughs> so if nothing else, you guys need to recognize, each and every one of you, that you you impacted at least one person already. But you have certainly impacted more people by being a part of this panel by being willing to share your ideas, your thoughts in the responses to these questions, by being open and transparent with us. Um, each one of you has made an impact already. And so with that last question or that last statement my wife posed to you is what, what can you do to help raise awareness? What can you do to help keep pushing this forward? Something to take away, something to think about. Uh, but one step you've already taken is being willing to be a part of this panel and being willing to be a part of this discussion and we appreciate each and every one of you. We appreciate you, David Hunt. We appreciate you, Leah Knight. We appreciate you, Justice Gibson. We appreciate you very much, Julian King. We appreciate you, Olivia Traha. We appreciate each and every one of you for, for having the courage to be a part of this and, and speaking up during our panel. All right, guys, a couple of things. Juneteenth.com, a whole lot of information I literally took just little snippets to share with you guys. I know you're already educated. I hope our adult um, viewers that are watching and listening will check out Juneteenth.com as well. Please study, check dates and facts. You want to have different sources, right? Because you know things get passed down and um, a day or two may be off or a first or a last name may be off. So as you're sharing information around Juneteenth, make sure you double check your sources and your resources. Spread the word. To the town of Garner, I am honored, we are honored um, that you would even consider us, that you would consider Faith Activated as a platform for us to have this conversation. We appreciate you guys.